Hey Unity developers, welcome back to another exciting tutorial. Today we'll dive into creating a powerful UI component for your projects, a dynamic content slider. Whether you want to showcase images, panels or any content in an interactive way, this Unity tutorial is for you. We'll cover everything from swipe gestures to automatic pagination and more. So grab your favorite beverage, let's jump into Unity and build something awesome together. First, let's explore how big companies create swipeable carousels for their games. To understand this, we've taken the example of PUBG, where you can see how content is displayed in a carousel. On the main menu, you'll notice a large display showcasing content previews. And below them are smaller elements that indicate what the next content is. Now, let's take a closer look at the carousel in the main menu. In the main menu, you can see a small carousel that provides information about the ongoing events in real time. Let's delve into its details. Firstly, you'll notice that the content changes every two seconds, utilizing an automatic content swipe with a timer. Secondly, all the content items are button components with on-click functions. Thirdly, while the carousel can be navigated using buttons, also known as pagination buttons, buttons might not be the quickest method. That's why we've implemented swipe functionality for a seamless transition between content items, allowing you to swipe right or left. Lastly, you'll find indicators that reveal the total number of content items and which content item you're currently viewing. These indicators are also known as navigation dots. Now let's create our own content carousel in Unity. To create this, first add a UI canvas to your current scene. After that, set it to scale with screen size. You can choose your preferred resolution. For me, 1920 asterisk 1080 works best. Now, go back to UI, add a panel for the background, set its color and opacity as per your liking. Again, go to UI. This time, add a scroll view and give it a suitable name and size. You can copy the dimensions from the video for a quick trial. Inside the scroll view, you'll find the content. Select it and add a horizontal layout group and content size fitter. Adjust their properties as follow. While the content is selected, add a new panel or button component. This will be your content. Make sure its size matches the scroll view size and remember the viewport size should be identical to the content size. For example, duplicate the content and fill them with different colors for illustration. Now select the scroll view and navigate to its scroll rect component. Set its properties as follows. Now add the content manager script to the scroll view or any other game object in your scene. Remember, the game object should always be active. You can find the content manager script for free in the description. Let's fill in its components. Content display. Assign the image component that represents the content display area. Content panels. Populate this list with the content panels or buttons you've created inside the scroll view. Dots container. Assign the game object that will hold the navigation dots. Dot prefab. Assign the game object that represents a single navigation dot. Next button. Assign the button component that will trigger the next content. Prev button. Assign the button component that will trigger the previous content. Use timer. Enable this if you want to use the auto move timer. It's limited swipe. Enable this if you want to limit swiping at the content edges. Auto move time. Set the time interval for automatic content movement. Swipe threshold. Set the distance threshold for swipe detection. All right, let's fill in those empty variables using the tutorial.
You have the option to hide the dots container and pagination buttons. It won't affect the functionality, but make sure to assign them. Otherwise, your carousel may not work correctly. And yes, this setup will work seamlessly on mobile devices as well. I'm confident that you've learned something new and exciting today. If you encounter any doubts or problems, feel free to comment, and I'll make sure to provide a solution. Our next tutorial might be a bit more advanced and complex, but it will be even better and more rewarding. To catch the next video on this topic, make sure to subscribe. If you found even a bit of this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button. Thanks for watching.